You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. Ro James. What's up? Now, Ro, I'm going to tell you something, man. Awesome, man. Um, oh, when you was uh, <laughs> over there doing drops, <laughs> Envy looked over there and Envy goes, yo, who's that with the fatty? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. I did not. No, he did. Yes, he did. I did not believe did. you. Yes, he did. I don't believe you. But Charlemagne did say, I don't believe yo, you. Yo, I don't believe you. Bro got a fatty. Charlemagne no, didn't say that. I didn't say that. You didn't say that? Oh. I definitely didn't say that. Hey, no. <laughs> yes, Envy. Who said it? I believe you both said it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you said, Angela, turn around and look. Angela, no. turn around and look. And I was like, guys, people are not objects. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then she started singing permission. Mm -hmm. And I said, if you go in jail with that, ain't nobody no, else going to go permission. No, <laughs> no, no, no. We're going to start interviewing you off with huh? Well, welcome, Ro James. Tell us the What's truth. Up? What up, Ro James? Hey. Yes, and I remember the first time I heard your song, Permission. Yeah. That was how I was first introduced to Ro James. Word. I heard it, Um, we were at my house, and we were just... The, uh, at your house? He was at your house? No, me and my friends. Oh. We were at the house, and everybody was like, oh, I love this song. Who is Word. this? And that's when we went and looked, and we were like, okay, who is this Ro James? Some new dude. Yeah. And yeah. We had to, it was a while ago. Yeah. But that's actually a great song, and what made you decide that you had to say with your permission? Because... All these rape allegations going around? It was a lot catching. of things going yeah. on, man. Yeah, and I felt like uh, we needed a message in our music, and... um something that could give you both and give you a little sexy, but also a message at the same time. Right, because it sounds sexy the way you say it. Yeah. Like, with your permission. You know what I mean? <laughs> is that really is that really a thing, though? I always hear that. I'm married, Word. so I don't have those problems. Word. Is Asking it, for permission? Yeah, like... Uh, you can't uh, ask your wife for permission? It might be sexy yeah, if you did. I was about to say that. I was about to say it's kind of sexy. No, but they be saying right? stuff like when you having sex with a girl, like you got to ask her as you're doing it, can I continue to do this? Nah, if you're no. already in action, you might as well just keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean... If she's screaming, ow, 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 no, stop. <laughs> you better stop. Yeah. Like, that's you that's mean stop, stop? Or you... <laughs> like, you was born in Germany, right? Yeah, Stuttgart. So you were the military? My dad was yeah. in the military. Got you. Yeah, Got you. yeah. How long and did everywhere. you live there? About a year and a half. And then I moved to New York while they were, you know, figuring it out, transition, new kid, Got moving you. around. So, yeah. So, what do you claim home? You claim New York is home? Queens. Queens, yeah, okay. South Side, Jamaica. <laughs> yeah. How'd you get into singing? Uh, my dad sings. Uh, my whole fam, my dad's whole side of the family sings. So yeah. growing up, music was always a part of our life. So, you know, I kind of wanted it to wanted to do it, but didn't mm -hmm. know all that it took. So um, once I made that final decision to do it, it was just like you know, putting myself in the right places, meeting the right people, navigating through the wrong people. You know, yeah. that's a lot of pressure too when your whole family sings. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> the expectations are high. You the first one to get like a deal, deal though, right? Nah, my, actually, my aunt, my aunt is Rosie Gaines. She mm -hmm. sung with Prince. Yes, wow. you remember? Know, oh. be like, so ladies and gentlemen, and Rosie Gaines. Uh, <laughs> so you met Prince was a few times. She was signed RCA oh, too, yeah. which is good. Did you meet so, Prince? Yeah, I met Prince twice. Really? Yeah, we met Prince one time. Yeah, he was floating. He was floating. He had a cape on. True story. Sure. And two chicks. That sounds right. Two older women. Mm -hmm. That sounds crazy. Would you say <laughs> Prince is your biggest inspiration? I would. I would say he's one of them. Um, I think that his uh, artistry definitely gave me like a blueprint of how to actually do this, actually be myself, talk about something, you know, have my message in my music. Mm -hmm. Not really focus on, you know, the trend or trying to chase a single, but actually just artistry and music. Purple you know? Rain was like one of my favorite movies ever. Yeah, yeah me too, bro. Yeah. Southside Queens. Southside Jamaica. Did you get did you get joked a lot? Because that's not a Southside Queens typical look. My, I'm no, looking, all the I'm time. People Carl always Hart looked Tins, at me. You know what I mean? That's people not, always looked at me like, yo, what are you doing, bro? Mm -hmm. But they respected it, you know? It, it makes my you look thing. like a star, too. It's my thing, mm -hmm. you know? So It is very important to have your own thing. Now, absolutely. I remember reading that you said 19 was a critical year for you. That's why yeah. you had 19 tattooed on you. I got 19 tattooed on me like three times. Mm -hmm. But uh, 19, 19 what? The number 19. When okay, I, gotcha. Well, I'm a, I was born November 19th. Gotcha. Um, 19 was when I wrote my first song. 19 was when I actually started this journey. Uh, my grandfather died when I was 19 years old. So Damn. he was like, you know, very pivotal in my life and in my career, making sure that I do what I'm supposed to do, always encouraging me, man, you have a voice, you should use it. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah. So you big in the numerology? I am. Really? Yeah. Number three, like I believe in that. Number seven, you know. Seven is God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three is understanding. Nineteen is evolution and change. Evolution and change. Yeah. Yep, that's what it said. Uh, and 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 supreme mathematics. One is knowledge. Nine is born, and everything must go from knowledge to born in order to be. Absolutely. Right. I see. Yeah. I, 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 you know, it's interesting too because you don't. I don't really. You do rock music. You do a little bit of country. Yeah. You do some R and B. My father's also a pastor, so I had to. You know, I grew up with gospel music as an influence, but. 
I'm not doing gospel clearly. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so all all of that plays a major part in all my sound. You ever think about your dad when you're like, what's my dad gonna say about this song? You know what? But that was the problem at first. I feel like I was writing music but thinking about what they were gonna think versus just saying, listen, this is how I feel, this is my music. So this album, I did that. And he was like, you know, my favorite song is Burn Slow. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> when did your father let the like, let the reins off, so to speak? He was like, all right, man, do your thing. You just sing. Nah, when I was younger. I mean, he wasn't really like, you can't do that. It was more like, you know, I would rather you do gospel music, but uh, do your thing, you know, be you. And they're proud. They're happy. And they're, man. Did he push you in that gospel direction first? You know, he tried. Stay away from that secular music. He tried. Yeah. He tried. He, you know, he said there's nobody in gospel that's like me that would be able to bring it the way that I would, so I should do it. I'm like, nah, that's not for me. You know? How hard was it to get a deal? Like, R&B has changed so much. Some people feel like R&B just even, isn't even as profitable. Yeah, I agree. You know, as um, it used to be. I feel like uh, when I first started, I really wasn't looking for a deal. I just wanted to get my music, put my sound together. Uh, put the plan together to where I was going, how I was going to do it. Um, but it is, man. I feel like r and I've heard it so many times that R&B is dead. Uh, you shouldn't do R&B. There's no money in it. Nobody wants to invest in that. They'll throw you crumbs, so don't do it. You know, rap a little, auto-tune, like do those things that are trendy right now. Mm -hmm. And I just, I knew that wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. I knew I had to actually, I had a voice I could actually sing. I, didn't, I don't need auto-tune. Um, and I feel like what I offer and what I bring to the table musically is way different than a lot of artists that I hear today, you know, and I feel like we need those artists that are about artistry for the sake of our music and, and for the sake of our culture, though? man. Because, you know, as a, as a kid, a younger, you would hear a lot of R&B on radio. Yeah. Hip-hop stations, R&B stations, the oldie stations, but now, outside of what, Trey and, and really Miguel. Yeah, it's not I too think many. Miguel might be the, the, me, Miguel might be the last one. I like Anderson Pack too, though. Anderson. But you don't really but hear Anderson really... on radio, so it's difficult to get that sound out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, man, I mean, that's Mark Pitts, man. He believed and me and was like, you know, this is gonna go. We're right. gonna do this, we're gonna push it. It's rare, man, it's really a blessing because I hear it all the time that artists don't get through, you don't cut through, especially R&B. Now we talked about the deal, so how did you many. get the deal? How did you get the deal with Mofi? Um, I put out this project, Coke, Jack, and, well, yeah, I put out this project, Coke, Jack, and Cadillacs. I had this song called Pledge Allegiance and uh, some people had passed it to Mark, like a few A&Rs, Miguel introduced, like just different people told Mark, yo. And for people that don't know who Mark Pitts is, he's right now, he's behind Usher, he's behind Miguel, J. Yeah. Cole. They need to discover behind Big. Biggie. Yeah, yeah. Big. Yeah. Well, one of All the people discover Big, go ahead. Yeah, so um, he heard my music, he called me in the office, he was like, I just want to see if you was really, how you dress how you look, mm -hmm. yeah, that's really you. Mm -hmm. And we went from there, and uh, we've been rocking since. And you was about to say, you, you don't think Andrew Pack's like, True all the way R&B? No, I don't think he's all the way R&B. I don't yeah. think so either. I wouldn't. I think he's like a mix. He's like rapping R&B. He has that raspy, but it's still soulful. Yeah, yeah, you know it's a lot of mean? soul. Yeah. It's still soulful and funky. Clearly your cars are very important to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the El Dorado, Cadillac, like what's what's the story behind that? Well, my first car was a 92 El Dorado. My mm -hmm. dad gave me my first car because, you know, he's trying to bribe me from moving to Indiana. I had to move there when I was a kid. And, uh, See, gave, I don't know much about cars, so is that like a classic? It's a old, it's car. a Cadillac. Cadillac, classic. Old Cadillac. school classic. Play yeah. a play a Cadillac. Yeah, you know. All right, so it's a coupe. nice, great gift. It's a coupe. Yeah, okay. it's a great gift, especially for a young dude. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know what it was, but uh, it, man, all the old heads would always stop me, like, bro, why'd you put twenty twos on your Cadillac? <laughs> no Cadillac. No sense. <laughs> old heads, but it was like that car represented my journey. It represented like you know where I was, where I am, where I'm going. Uh, where I've been, my father, like I said, instilled in us great things, and he also told us, you know, travel, see the world. Growing up, he was in the mm -hmm. military, so traveling. So that car represented like my journey. Mm -hmm. You know, I know a lot, a lot of, of people. A lot, I was seat. just about to say oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> a big back seat. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now they say you broke up with your your, your, your girlfriend because you told her you wasn't ready for marriage and kids. You wanted to take things to the next that. level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, right in the time of you. In the beginning of your career, right when you're rising, right when you're having to put in all the work, all the radio, all the psh, relationships are super hard because you can't, you, you know, a woman wants that attention. She wants to know that you're there and you're not there. You're traveling. You can't call her every minute. You can't pick up whenever she wants to talk. Mm -hmm. And then for her to throw, you know, let's have a kid. You're like, yo, that's selfish. How am I yeah, now a kid? you want to have a kid when I got like, this record deal. You ain't like, how, have a kid. <laughs> how am I having a kid? A <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that's crazy. So, yeah. Did it hurt? Was she hurt behind it? I think we I both were. I would think so. <laughs> yeah, I think we both were. We're still like processing it, and I'm cool. I think that uh, it's perfect timing for me because it allows me to grow in this new space. So, 
and be free. Yeah, you don't need no distractions. You don't need somebody like, why you ain't call me? You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And so, you don't want to hurt somebody at the same time. Exactly. I would think. I think it's kind of leading somebody on, making them think like, making them wait kind of. I feel like if it's worth it and if she's ready to wait, she will. If not. But also, you can't get no random pregnant while you're on that road. No. <laughs> no, sir. But she going to have no a fit then. No. <laughs> no. I'm cool. I already got one. I'm cool. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Do you wear condoms on the road? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Necessary. <laughs> what is it like crazy. for you being on tour now, though? What is it like? Yeah. Uh, it's hectic. It's who hectic. was the first person you went on tour with? The first person I went... Who was the first person I went on tour with? Erica. Erica Badu. Badu. Wow, she just celebrated wow. the born day. Happy belated. Happy belated, Erica. How was that? Amazing, man. I feel like I learned... We love Erica. ...a lot from watching her, just her, the way she brings in the vibe. Mm -hmm. You know, the way she performs, her background, just the band, everything, the control of her band, mm -hmm. you know, as a, coming in, it just showed me, like, professionalism, how to be on point, get your team together, get your band together, right. you know what I mean? How'd you so, get on that tour? Did she invite you, or was it? Uh, Just, like, management, everybody mm -hmm. putting it all together, plugs. Yeah, but look, Erica got a like fat ass, too. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'm going to call Jay Electronica. <laughs> I'm going to call Jay Electronica up here this on This guy is crazy. <laughs> they ain't together no more. Well, no, but still. He's oh. still, he's still, <laughs> he's still, still yeah, baby moms. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you ever look back at that and be like, man, <laughs> thinking about the crazy. first, like your first few dates and how much you progressed up until now? Absolutely. I remember my first performance in New York. Actually, I can't, I remember my first one. I don't remember where it was at, but I do remember my performance in SOBs. And I'm like, man, <laughs> wow. Off notes, nervous, not confident about my voice, you know, making, worried about the sound, worried about the band, just so many things. Now I'm like in a zone, in a pocket. Feel like my voice is on point. I know my voice now. When I get on the stage, I'm not nervous. You know, I'm going up there. Right. Because a lot of people don't know that all that has to come with experience. Like it, nobody definitely. ever gets up on stage in the beginning. Nah. And does it right. The nerves, man. <laughs> so yeah. They had an article in the News and Observer. They compared you. They said uh, your music as if is as if Prince discovered trap music. Wow. It's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Pressure, but not really, because I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to copy Prince. You right. know, I'm not trying to do what Prince does. I'm trying to do me. I think Prince was a major influence. He had, like I said, his artistry was amazing, but uh, definitely not trying to copy. I respect what he did, what he brought to the table, what he brought to us as artists and as people with music. But and I'm on my own. When, when you met him, were you were you on already? Or? I was on my way. Okay. Uh, when I met him, I met him once when I was younger, and then I met him. He did like a jam session, random like pop up in New York City, and I had a chance to meet him. Did he give you any words of advice? Nah, you know it's quick. Like yeah. nice to meet you, pleasure. Blah, blah, blah. Peace. Prince isn't the type of person you even like. Nah, it's not really crazy conversation. Real, yeah. It's like <laughs> yeah, I was awkward when I you saw gotta him. You got to show too. your respect and keep it moving. Very yeah, very. I, was like, I was like, hey man, I, uh, <laughs> I was raised Jehovah Witness too. He didn't say it like that. He was like, that's great, man. We'll talk about it sometime, and he kept moving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jehovah Witness too. He's like, okay, we'll talk about it. All right, you have a nice day, and he floated off. And FYI, Charlotte is not really floated Jehovah Witness anymore <laughs> at all. So all of a sudden, for that hey, moment, man, I was raised Jehovah Witness. Really? Yeah, that was strict, right? Yeah, it was pretty strict. But I mean, it's only strict if you listen to what they say. That's true. <laughs> that this is true. This is true. This is true. Oh. How did this death affect you last year? Man, it was hard. Um, actually, I was on my way to film at Revolt when I got in the car. My manager was like, Film what, Revolt? I was doing that little uh, 360 where they go around you on the mid. The Nobody saw it. They Nobody saw it. Yeah, they did. They, I, they saw it. You and your manager. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody watches Revolt. Right, We're on Revolt every morning. But I got in the car. Nobody watches us. And he was like, yo, Prince died. I was like, what? I was like, wow, that's crazy. I never, it, you just feel like he was not going to die. I don't right. know. He's like a superhero. Immortal, yeah, yeah, yeah. And even before that, like the week before, you had heard rumors. That he was sick. Like, he had to get off a plane or something. And you were like, oh, please, Prince is fine. He'd be, He'd right. be okay. He got a little cold, mm -hmm. you know, but when he died, it was crazy. It was, it's, it, even still, it's like, wow, he's not here. That's crazy. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. been starstruck? Not yet. Meeting anybody? Who would make you be like, oh, my God? <clears throat> is there anybody that you, if you met them, you would... Nah, I'm not like that. Mm -hmm. I think I've met a lot of people so far, so I think all the people that I've met. I think when we saw Prince, that was the most. That special. would probably be the most one. Yeah, yeah. I ever been. Yeah, like Prince was a little one. bit. Yeah, Prince was a little bit. Just the way he looked. Just I mean, from the cape. Intriguing. And, I think yeah. Michael Jackson would have been intriguing just to be like. I think if I met Sade, if yeah, I met Sade, yeah. I might be starstruck. I don't feel like, like Prince had we have much. those. 
He took his gloves off. Prince had a cape. He had gloves on. He was with Heels. two older women. It, <laughs> it was random old, it as was hell. Younger women. No, it was two older women. They was younger. Walking, they was just walking him down. Just walking. Home. I was like six in the morning. No big. You know what I mean? No big entourage. I'm like, and somebody was like, Prince here. I'm like, Prince is here. Yeah, why would Prince be why here? Would, right? Yeah. Why would he Prince be here? Yeah. And he literally floated away. And I took a picture of him. And it disappeared. As he was floating away, and the picture was in my phone for three seconds, and the whole it just went black. It was just like a black square where the picture of him was. Absolutely. For real, you just. I, saw, I promise to God. That's crazy. I showed them the picture. They saw yeah. it. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> it disappeared. But yeah, I was saying Sade would be a person if I met Sade. Sade I think that would too, because she kind of like you never see secludes her. It's not like herself. You see her yeah. Either. So when you see her, you're like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I like and you got this Highline Ballroom performance coming, right? Last night. That oh, was last, last night. night. Yeah. How, was, how was it? <laughs> great, bro. It was great. It mm -hmm. felt good to be home in New York. You know, to do. Come back and share what I've been learning, where right. I've been, you know, all the people supporting me all these years, all the friends, all that. So it was great. I great feel like I met, I met you somewhere. Where I met was you that? too. Was it at the Mary J. Blige concert or something? I think so. Yeah, we yeah. were at Mary J. Blige when yeah. she was in New York with Maxwell. Yeah. You opened up the show. I opened the show. Yeah. That's right. That was great. That was a dope we were there. That was a dope show. Yeah, we was we was there. We was that was my show. that was that was my my training too. Yeah, like arenas and all those people. Yeah, how was that? How was that, that experience? Because they got you know Maxwell and, and Mary. They loved them, man. Well, right. Catalog, catalog. Mm -hmm. It was great too. I mean, just watching him get on the stage, perform, watching how he does it, his team, uh, the ladies throwing themselves, how he finesses that. You he know? gave you a lot of love every show. Yeah, he's good people, every man. It's like big bro, real life. He he like took me under his wing, told me a lot of things about the music industry, what to watch out for. Make sure I stay with the music. Mm -hmm. Don't change. You know, that was probably the biggest advice. He's like, you know, there's so many people going to come in your ear. There's so many things that are going to change, but don't compromise on the music. And so, yeah, that's great advice. Mary J. Blige, too, soul pouring Don't it out on the stage, throwing herself on the floor, her dance. <laughs> I love Mary. It was a great, great experience, great growth. I feel like going into, right into my own tour was just, it, it was great preparation for where I was going. Dope. We were talking earlier about all the different 90s groups that we would love uh, to see get back together. Uh -huh. Who are some people that you love from the 90s? Man, I love Jodeci. I mean, H-Town, is not everybody's in H-Town, but I loved H-Town, mm -hmm. Genuine, uh, D'Angelo. Mm -hmm. Man, uh, you said kind of groups. reminiscent yeah. of D'Angelo, too. I, I heard that a lot, too. I, I listened to a lot of D'Angelo growing up, mm -hmm. sure. Do you feel like you're, you're, you're where you're, you want to be at? Career-wise? Yeah. Nah, man, I think I'm just starting. I think there's so many things I want to do, so many places I want to go, so many, uh, like you said earlier, I, I, my sound is comprised of country, rock, R&B, soul, hip-hop. So it's like there's so many different uh, sounds that I want to share with people, but I think that people can only understand certain things in time, in increments. So, yeah. Right, I feel like the country genre has been so difficult to cross over into. Like, you see how they treated Beyonce. Yeah, they were so yeah. upset about... And it's like, okay, like if you do a country song, do they accept you as getting nominated for a country music award? It's like they have an issue. I think that because you don't, I mean, if you don't come into it like that or even say that you have that influence, but then at the same time, she's from Texas, so. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how can you? I don't know. It's just different. You got nominated for a Grammy, right? For yeah, man. First one. Yeah. Congrats first on one. that. Thank you, man. What was Thank that you. experience like? How did you get that call? Oh, I was uh mm -hmm. I was on the road with Maxwell and Mary and then we had just got into our to a new city, just got to the hotel, it was like six AM and my phone just kept ringing, text, ring, ring, ring. And I was ignoring it. I was like, I'm about to go to sleep. Finally I picked up and one of my homegirls was like, Congratulations. I was like, What's up? She's like, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, uh, on your first Grammy nomination. And mm -hmm. I was like, Wow. So that felt great, man. Like I said I've been doing this for a minute so just to have that recognition from the other sides you know what I mean and just to say you know we appreciate what you're bringing to the table Did with you your sound I, do, I went you went I went he's like you damn right I got nominated I went this year <laughs> I mean a lot of my friends been nominated in the past and they would invite me but I'd be like nah you know it's not my thing right. so for me to go my first time with my thing was good did you expect so, to win or nope <laughs> <laughs> honestly I didn't I, I looked at the ballot and I kind of knew one, I knew Beyonce was performing, <laughs> right. and uh, but also knew that Solange was this was her time. You know, she had put out something that finally caught for people, and it was amazing. It was great. So I kind of knew that that was where it was gonna go. Does, does it dictate how you how you approach the studio? Like once you get nominated for a Grammy, and you're like, okay, they're actually paying attention. Maybe I know what kind of records to craft to get the Grammy nods, or you just keep it about the art. That's the hard thing, man. And I actually thought about that. I feel like um, people would expect me to come out with something 
lack of permission again next time around just so they can be like, oh, I'm familiar with that, I'm comfortable. But I feel like uh, every album should be growth. You should challenge yourself, you should evolve. And I feel like um, next album, I'm gonna it's gonna be even greater. And hopefully I have four nominations this time, mm -hmm. you know, in different categories. So just keep pushing and being greater and not being stuck in the same place. All right. Well, Road James, ladies and yeah, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate you for joining us. Yo, thank you, man. I appreciate you guys. All right, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. The Breakfast Club. Every weekday morning, tune in.